And here, I thought, let me just check. No scientist, not even these knaves who are making up all this bloody water nonsense, could possibly have done that. So I went back to the scientist's final report, as submitted by the two and a half thousand scientists who worked on that report. And that is the graph that they submitted, correctly showing just one trend line covering the whole period, no conclusion drawn about any acceleration in the rate of global warming. So once again, the bureaucrats got at it, tampered with it. Goodness knows who did the tampering. I haven't found out yet. I will, because the police are going to be called in on this one. It's so obviously fraudulent. And we're going to find out who did it. And we're going to stop it. Because frankly, what is going on here? Somebody yelled out the word fraud earlier, and they were right to do so. Because these people are making fortunes at your expense and mine by this bogus science. And let's do their own technique on their own data. And let's show their own trend line for the last 100 years, which I've put in green this time. And then I've added my own trend line from 1905 to 1945. And that is twice as steep as the trend line from 1905 to 2005. Phew, global warming is calming down. <laughs> well, of course, my conclusion is every bit as bogus as theirs. And because I can use the same data on the same graph, the same technique and yet produce a precisely opposite result, we know from that that the technique must be bogus. So then, what are they really trying to hide? And this is absolutely fascinating. What they're trying to hide is that the rate at which the world is warming is not exceptional at all. It's entirely within the natural variability of the climate, and there's absolutely nothing whatever to worry about. And they themselves have got a lot to worry about, because they know this. They know it's not warming as fast as their predictions would have us believe. You saw from David there the chart of Hansen's first attempt at predicting how much warming there would be, and how only about a third of what he predicted has actually come to pass. And that's roughly how it still is. And we're going to look at this in some detail, because it's very important. Now here we have the same graph we've just looked at. This time I have added three trend lines, but these are correctly added because I was asking a single simple question, which is what is the fastest rate at which warming has occurred for more than 10 years at a time in the entire record measured by instruments? And there are three such periods. From 1975 to 2001, the most recent, the one we could have influenced, and two previous periods neither of which we could have influenced. And yet, all three periods are at the same rate of warming. Just 0.16 Celsius per decade, the equivalent of 1.6 Celsius per century, and that's the maximum rate. So then, let's do a little bit of going back further into history. What's the oldest temperature record for a region of the planet that we have? It's the Central England temperature record. It started in 1659. And between 17, 1695, and 1730, the rate of warming was almost 0.4 Celsius per decade for a third of a century. And that is three times the maximum rate of warming that we've seen over the last um, 150, 560 years. And that rapid rate of warming you're looking at now on the screen between the red and green arrows there, that rate of warming was before we had any SUVs to wreck the planet with. It was before the Industrial Revolution even began. It was a natural warming. Now you can say, oh, yes, uh, <coughs> these were old thermometers, we didn't have Stevenson screens, and uh, maybe they weren't terribly accurate, etc., etc. However, can they, be, can they have been any less accurate than the temperature measurements from the ground that you've seen about in Joe's and David's presentation? They can't be any worse than that, can they? So what's going on? As David said, we're looking at perhaps a natural phenomenon causing the ups and downs in temperature that we see. And here is the plot of the weather index known as the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. It describes a, a system of weather patterns over the Pacific. And you can see there is a superficial correlation. It doesn't prove causation. But what we can say is this, that the ups and downs in temperature, and therefore these steep rises in temperature that you see several times in the graph, these are not caused by CO2 because the CO2 is rising a little bit each year, very steadily upwards. 
whereas the temperature graph is jiggling up and down. And therefore, these jigglings up and down are not caused by the CO2, because absence of correlation necessarily implies absence of causation. The CO2 cannot have caused the temperature change, and the temperature change cannot have caused the CO2 change. They are independent variables, at least in this respect. There may be some underlying general upward pressure caused by the CO2. One would expect that. But these major fluctuations and rapid warmings, most of that can't be attributed to CO2, and that's how we know that it's very unlikely that most of the warming over the last 60 years was caused by us. And if we look at this mismatch here in the Arctic in particular, the CO2 curve, as you can see, very steady, going upwards all the time, uh, and then you've got the temperature jiggling around all over the place, and you'll see it's a very bad fit. And so the CO2 change is clearly not a major impact on the temperature change, certainly in the very short term. But now, if we look at the solar changes compared with the temperature change, well, that begins to fit quite well. And so it means at least there is a possibility of, co of, of causation between those two. Not proven, but it's at least a possibility. And indeed, we can go back to Japan, where for 100 years they've been keeping pyranometers, which simply measure how much sunlight is hitting the ground. If clouds get in the way, they'll read less. If there are no clouds, they'll read more. If the sun is very strong, they'll read more. If it's weak, they'll read less. And here again, you see a rather spectacular correlation between these very accurately kept records over the last 100 years and changes in temperature. And once again, not much room for CO2 to be the major factor in all this. And there is the record of the sun's activity uh, from NASA over the last three or 400 years. And you'll see that um, back in the Maunda minimum, what are we saying here? One hour. You know, I've got another hour to go. I'm, I'm, I'm very glad to think so. um, back in the Maunda minimum here, there was virtually no uh, sunspot activity at all, and so the planet was very cool. That was where the little ice age happened, because the sun was not so active. Then it grew to a grand maximum, where the sun was more active over a 70-year period, either side of, of 1960, more active than at almost any time in the whole of the last 11,400 years. So you would expect to find 300 years of global warming between that grand minimum and that grand maximum, and that's precisely what we do find. And here is the temperature trend over the last 10 years. And Professor Garner says of this, he says people like Munton shouldn't produce this. They shouldn't show you this, that there's been no trend, no growth in temperature, no global warming for 10 years. He says that's a very puzzling thing for them to say. And I have checked with econometricians, and they have said that this is still consistent with a warming trend. Well, yes, of course it is, as we'll now see. Uh, of course, the other side, the, the climate gate emailers are saying there has been no global warming for a decade. We cannot explain why it's a travesty that we can't. Well, hey, they're quite right there. It is a travesty that we can't. The reason why is that natural factors overwhelm the CO2 factor. Get used to it. So, let's have a look at what is being done uh, by your own uh, record keeping. And here we find the actual record in blue of the temperature changes at Darwin Airport over the last hundred years. And then the red line is what was submitted by your Bureau of Meteorology for the compilation of the International Temperature Data Set. I think you will see why it is that we are not terribly happy with the International Temperature Data Set. And indeed, they, they've tried to suggest that the uh, warming that's been going on since 1941 at Darwin Airport is the equivalent of six Celsius per century. What planet are they living on? It certainly isn't this one. Or to put it another way, what are they on? I want some too. <laughs> so here is the, um, that rapid rate of warming from 1979 to uh, 2001. 0.16 Celsius per decade. Then we put in no warming for 10 years. Then we join up the vector diagram and we see 0.14 Celsius per decade of warming. So yes, there's still a warming trend if you go back to 1976, but it's less than it was before because we've had 10 years without any warming. You don't need to be an econometrician to work that one out, Ross baby. <laughs> and let's go look right back to 1950. There's been virtually 
no warming really to speak of that we'd worry about since 1950, 0.12. 